Today I wanted to talk about how big is the observable universe really? And with all the JWST data coming in, we're finding that it may be a lot bigger than the Big Bangers thought. And as I mentioned in a recent video, if matter was produced at all, and the laws of physics are the same as they've always been, then matter is produced continuously and everywhere, which invalidates the Big Bang model. But it leaves us with the question is, would we have an infinitely big universe, because there's no boundaries we know to put on it, but we can't observe up to infinity because of redshift, and we couldn't observe up to infinity anyway. So that's why I put not infinity. But we are limited because a redshift of a thousand puts us into microwave range, which would interfere with a cosmic microwave background. And it's different, difficult to get optics in the microwave as well. So somewhere between where we are now at Z13 and Z equals a thousand is going to be the observational limit. Now, if we use Z equals 17, because there's some hints there might be some Z equals 17 galaxies we can see with JWST, which, by the way, because of its longest wavelength is 28 microns, it can only see out to 15 to 17 in redshift. But if we wanted to go to Z equals 100, we would need a different telescope, and we would need 35 times more light. Z equals 200 would be 140 times more light, 300, around 300 times more light. So we could do the light part, and we can probably do the telescope part, making a big enough one. I'm not sure if it would be a space telescope, or we might have to do something different. But I think that we can observe somewhere between Z equals 100 to 300 sometime in the next 100 years. So perhaps that's where the true observable limit is. And then the size is dependent on the redshift model you use. If there are three basic curves, there's a linear Hubble approximation, which is similar to the maximum luminosity dis distance based on just geometry, the one over R squared law. Then we have a medium redshift model, which forms mostly the LOS um, co-moving frame distance and in the middle. And then we have the Big Bang model where the galaxies were much closer to us in the distance past when you go past Z equals 1.6. And so with those three models, we can really differentiate what's going on. And I'll talk about that more. But taking a step back to the Big Bang model, in a Big Bang model where speed of light's limited and it started at a point, it would only expand halfway before we could see galaxies. Because in 13.6 billion years since the first galaxies were made under the Big Bang model, we could only see those that were 6.8 billion years old. But we already see more than that, so we know that that, that model is not correct. Because you have, if you had matter moving at the speed of light and then light coming back to us at the speed of light, 6.8 billion light years is the limit. But if you have a Big Bang model that violates the speed of light limit, then you could see out to 13.6 billion light years, which is what we say now. Somehow the universe is said to expand instantaneously in cosmological terms and which allows us to see further than we could if it, if it was expanding at the speed of light. So in the Big Bang approximation, the galaxies we currently see that are estimated to be 13.6 billion light years away, the actual proper distance where the galaxy is now would be 33.6 billion light years away. And the size of the observable Big Bang model is 46.5. So somewhere between 33.6 and 46 would be the observable limit under the Big Bang model. 
Now, if we go to redshift model, as I said, the, there's one model where you have where you're losing redshift, you're losing energy in redshifting in the same proportion as a percentage. So you lose, say, 10% for this distance and 10% for this distance. But that's not 20% for the total, the linear model. It's compounding to be multiplying, so 21%. But if you are doing that incrementally at each distance, it's like compounding interest where it multiplies a lot faster than simply adding up the percentage. And in that case, a Z equals 17 galaxy is 38.2 billion light years away, according to one approximation I use uh, that I'll link to. But then if we use a linear approximation of the Hubble redshift, we get to that get same Z equals 17 galaxy being closer to 200 billion light years away. And that's also close to the luminosity distance model, which is only limited by the 1 over R squared law. And that would be an idealized type of redshift model going on. So the two models, the linear Hubble and, and the luminosity distance model, are very similar. But it's notable that the other redshift model, where you get compounding redshift with, as a percentage with distance, is significantly different, 38.2 versus 200 approximately. So it could be a factor of four or five different, which because the size of the galaxy varies with the square of distance, means 20 to 25 maybe which is observable. So we should be able to tell. Now, the Big Bang solution's been invalidated because of the Tolman test. Because if you look at the curve that goes like this on the chart I'm showing, that is the curve for the Big Bang, where galaxies were extremely close to us when the light was emitted, and versus the linear approximation where they're a lot farther away. So the size of the, uh, of the galaxies that we do and will observe at higher z as we go and continue to collect data will make it very clear which one's right. And so far, the data that Eric Lerner has examined is telling us that the galaxies' sizes follow the non-expanding model, the linear model in particular. So the middle redshift model, the compounding redshift, as I like to think of it, follows close to the co-moving frame curve. And so even then, there's a big difference in size once you get past z equals 10. So by estimating the size of galaxies for z equals 10 and beyond, we should even be able to differentiate redshift models where you have this compounding type versus linear approximation. And we should be getting data on this sometime in the next year or maybe two that will tell us which model's right. And then from there, we'll be able to work on what redshift models match the data and come up with our best solution. And I'll talk about redshift models in another video. But in short, I think that z equals 100 to 300 is possible, somewhere in the 1,000 to 3,000 billion light years away, maybe observable. We'll just have to see what detectors we develop and if they're big enough and can gather enough light to make those measurements. So I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And I want to thank my PayPal and Patreon and Super Thanks supporters. They're always a big help. And if you're interested in learning more about my quantum field theory research and particle theory research, I do have some books for sale, which also helps me and help you learn something about that research. So thanks for watching.